3.3 measures of position. We're going to start with Z score. The Z score of an individual data value. It tells you how many standard deviations that value is from its population mean, whether it's above or below. So a Z score gives you the placement of standard deviations above or below the population mean for a data value. So we're going to use a z-score for this problem. Mean height for adult men in the U.S. So the population mean height for adult men is 69.4 inches with a standard deviation of 3.1. The mean height for adult women in the U.S. is a population mean is 63.8, standard deviation, that is a horrible sigma, I apologize, 2.8. So the question is, who's taller relative to their gender, a man who's 73 inches tall or a woman who's 68 inches tall? So the data value for the men is 73 and the women is 68. So do we get the z-score, taking the data value subtracting from the population mean divided by the population standard deviation. So one point, I'm going to round to two decimal places. So a man who's 73 inches tall is 1.16 standard deviations above average for this data for that data set where a woman who's 68 inches tall is one and a half standard deviations above average. So she, the woman is taller relative to her gender. Using my z-score, you can clearly compare. This is one and a half, and this is only 1.16 standard deviations above average. So the z-score, one, two, three standard deviations above or below population mean. You can also use the empirical rule with these numbers. So let's do another problem. Um, if the population mean was 7 and the standard deviation is 2, now you don't have to do this. I'm just comparing what the z-score is. Because at the mean, the z-score is 0. So if I'm going two standard deviations below this mean, 5, 3, 1. All right, so now we're going to use the, the, the z-score for this data value or population value of 5. It's going to be negative 1. It's exactly 1 below. But let's see how that comes out. Because they're not always going to be nice, easy numbers like this. So 5, subtract the mean of 7, divided by the standard deviation of 2, is negative 2 over 2. 5 is exactly one standard deviation below the mean for this data set. So we'll do it again for 10. 10 is greater than the average, so it's going to be a positive z-score. If we look up here, it's obviously going to be a positive 1.5. But this works even when the numbers aren't this easy to see. All right, so 10 is greater than 7, so it's going to be positive. That's 3 divided by 2 is positive 1.5. It's exactly, so 10 for this data set is 1.5 standard deviations 
above the population mean. All right, what if we're asked what the population value is, or the data value, or the x, and they're giving you a z-score? What we're going to do is we're going to take this formula and we're going to solve for x. So this is when you're looking for an x and you're given the z. This is the formula we use. So if we want exactly one and a half standard deviations below average, our standard deviation was 2 and our population mean was 7. That happens at 4, which makes sense right here, exactly between 3 and 5. We're negative one and a half standard deviations below the population mean of seven.